out to watch a documentary on Martin Luther and the Catholic Church, leading to the Protestant Reformation. Martin Luther was a revolutionary man born in Germany on November 10, 1483. His existence changed the Christian faith forever. When Martin Luther was born, his father wanted him to become a lawyer because his father was a minor himself, and he wanted Martin to have a better life than him. However, one day Martin Luther got caught in a thunderstorm, and the storm really scared him. So Martin Luther promised to become a monk if God saved him from the storm. Martin Luther was a man of his word, so he became a monk. Martin Luther's father was very upset that he became a monk. He then became a delegate of the church in Rome, where he's seen lots of corruption within the Catholic Church. This made Martin Luther realize that salvation came not from fearing God, but in faith alone. This kick-started the Protestant Reformation. You are not only responsible for what you say, but also for what you do not say. Martin Luther. What Martin Luther was trying to say by this quote was that if he did not speak out against the Catholic Church, he would be held responsible in the eyes of the Lord. Martin Luther explored many scriptures in the Bible while he was earning his bachelor's degree in biblical studies in 1508. While he was studying the Bible, he realized that many things that the Pope and the church were doing were wrong. He felt that the church was straying away from the truth written in the Bible, so he began to spread his own beliefs and enlightenment about how salvation from God is, is received by just faith alone. He expressed his disagreement with the church by nailing the 95 Theses to the church door, but some historians believe that that is just a myth and that he actually just mailed the letter to the Pope. Every man must do two things alone. He must do his own believing and his own dying. By this quote, Martin Luther was expressing how he felt that just by believing in God and having faith alone is what you need to get into heaven, not by giving indulgences and paying the church, which is what Pope Leo Chance was preaching. Martin Luther had many encounters with the Catholic Church. He wasn't afraid to express his ideas and nailed the 95 Theses to the church door, causing the Catholic Church to be very upset. The 95 Theses not only talked about the wrongdoings of the Catholic Church, but the selling of indulgences. They would have a meeting to, to discuss this and consider Luther a heretic and banished him from the Holy Roman Empire. Luther gained many followers thanks to, thanks to this. That would help him stand up against the Catholic Church. The Council of Trent would come due to the unrest in the Catholic Church and efforts to counteract the Protestant Reformation. Everything Luther stood for would be discussed in the 18 years that it lasted. John Calvin would later be influenced by Martin Luther, even though Luther was 25 years older than him. John Calvin continued to carry out the ideas of his mentor after Luther died. If you want to change the world, pick up your pen and write. Martin Luther. What Martin Luther meant by this quote is that you have to stand up for what you believe in. He was probably referring to the 95 Theses when he said this. Martin Luther exchanged many different letters with many different people regarding his faith. One letter was even exchanged with Pope Leo X. He exchanged this letter in a very respectful way, but he told the Pope all of his problems with him and all of his problems within the Catholic Church. In Martin Luther's letter to Pope Leo X, he says, among those monstrous evils of this age with which I have now for three years been waging war, I am sometimes compelled to look to you and to call you to mind, most blessed Father Leo. In truth, since you alone are everywhere considered as being the cause of my engaging war, I cannot at any time fail to remember you. And although I have been compelled by the causeless raging of your imp impious flatters against me to appeal from your seat to future counsel. Fearless of the feudal degrees of your proceeders, Pius and Julius, who in their foolish training prohibited such an action, yet I have never been so alienated in feeling from your blessedness as to not have sought you with all my might, in diligent prayer and crying to God, all the best gifts for you and for your see, but those who have hithered and devoured to terrify me. With the majesty of your name and authority, I have begun quite to despise and triumph over. One thing I see remaining, which I cannot despise, and this has been no has been the reason of my writing anew to your blessedness, namely that I find the blame is cast on me, and that it, and that it is imputed to me as a great offense, that in my rashness I am judged to have spared not even your person. Martin Luther also exchanged many different letters discussing the love and faithfulness of God. This can be shown in Martin Luther's letter to Jerome Weller. 
Martin Luther's letter to Jerome Weller was wrote in July of 1530. The letter says, My dear Jerome, the reason that you are targeted by the devil is because you are a firm believer in Christ. The devil never wastes time with enemies of Christ. It is natural that all of us who are Christians make an adversary out of the devil. As St. Peter says, your adversary, the devil, walketh about. Therefore, excellent Jerome, you ought to rejoice in this attack of the devil because it is a sure sign that God is loving and merciful to you. Well, I mean, I guess that the answer to that is that I would have followed Lutheran because I'm Protestant. And I think that uh, his break with the church was real because what they were doing was not scriptural. They had forgotten all about the Bible. They were just doing what they believed. And because the Roman Catholic Church was so popular then, um, they had gotten away from keeping the main thing the main thing. And so, yeah, I'm following Lutheran now just by being Methodist, as are all the other denominations in Christendom. They're all, in some way or another, following Luther because they've departed from the Roman Catholic Church. And it's impossible to buy your way to heaven. And when people do that, there's really another motive. It's about money. There's a indulgences. There's a short answer and a long answer. The short answer is stupid. They look stupid that the church would ever do such a thing. It's almost like playing God, t telling somebody, if you'll do these practices, you'll have less time in purgatory between earth and heaven, right? That's God's business, okay? The long answer is, let me ask you a question. When we sin, when we hurt somebody else, do are we obligated not just to be sorry about it, but to also make amends? Yeah. To try to fix it, Yeah. right? Okay, now hang on to that notion. We, we agree with that too in Catholicism. So we have what's penance. When you go to confession, you're supposed to get a penance and do something, some good acts, right? Mm -hmm. Now stretch it a little bit. What if you can't? What if you cannot undo the harm that you did? You still should make some sort of penance, some sort of amends, including maybe a monetary donation because sacrificing money, giving money, is a sacrifice to most people, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, there's kind of the logic of an yeah. indulgence, but it got way out of hand when in the Middle Ages, when priests would give out indulgences for almost anything, like they were selling selling salvation. And it was very misunderstood and got way out of hand. Martin Luther was a brilliant soul, um, deeply and earnestly in search of God. He did all the disciplinary practices of being an Augustinian Catholic monk. He gave it his best in the monastery to be close to God and to feel uh, that he was worthy of salvation and he never could get there. He always felt no matter how much he tried, uh, he just didn't feel worthy of salvation until he finally just appealed to scripture where it says justification by faith alone and he had his answer. You don't need to necessarily follow the rules of the Catholic Church. Uh, he loved scripture. In fact, at that point, he decides Scripture alone is the only necessary guide. As Catholics, we believe in, in the uh, value and the inerrancy of the Scriptures, gift from God, but also in the traditional teachings of the Church that for 2,000 years, there's a collective body of wisdom there. Not that we're always right, we're certainly not, but that there's value to the traditional teachings. So he was a, a brilliant, holy man who wanted to please God, um, the problem with Martin Luther was how he went about it. He became quite angry and ugly. Um, when you ask me about reformer versus heretic, I'll, I'll add in some more for you. Um, it's, unfortunate, it's unfortunate that it ended up splitting the church because the questions he was raising were valid, timely questions that the church was off base on, some of them. Um, there was a lot of corruption in the Vatican at that point in time, and he... He, he brought that to, to the public's attention. Good for him.